<gasps> okay, I just struggled for five minutes to take a high quality picture. Hi, my name is Steph. Welcome back to Coffee Over Apples. This is a book haul video. Um, I think I probably mentioned in a couple videos that I've been meaning to post a book haul for a while, but there have been books that have taken time to come in the mail. Um, I have had different things happen, like going around to my free little libraries and happening to find really good stuff when I was unhauling and not expecting to bring more books home because that usually doesn't happen where I find something that I'm really looking forward to. Um, I also like took a stroll yesterday and found some more books that I was looking at at my free little, little libraries nearby. Um, and then I got some packages. So let's open up all the packages first and then I will go into the books that I've bought and gotten from various means over like the past two months. Um, so I'm gonna open up two packages that just came in the mail today and I think I might know where they are. I have two packages here. Um, I'm pretty sure that it's books because every year my school gives all of the teachers a gift card to Amazon to just use for whatever we think we need, like decorations and stuff like that for our classroom. Um, so I decided to buy manga for my library for my classroom. So this is going to be classroom manga. I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, here is package number one. Let's see. Yes! Okay, so a couple volumes of manga here. I got three. So first we have Haiku Volume 2. Uh, I did start collecting Haiku last year for my students and they love it. So I have Volume 1 at school. So here's Volume 2. Uh, okay, My Hero Academia Volume Two, which probably means that volume one is in another bag because this looks like One Punch Man volume three. These are three series that I'm currently collecting for my classroom, among other things, uh, but Haiku, My Hero Academia, and One Punch Man because what teen these days doesn't love them? And they're super fun and super like action and wholesome and funny and I love a good comedy. So comedies are like probably the main source of entertainment in my classroom library. Okay. Package number two. Oh. oh, it's really big. Um, oh, that's right, I ordered an omnibus. Okay, looks like there's two things in here. This is oh, Azuma Dayo. Oh my gosh, I haven't read this since I was in high school, but it's so much fun. This is a old comedy manga about a bunch of school-aged girls and like cat shenanigans. It's a great teen manga, so I got this omnibus for my classroom. I'm probably gonna end up reading all these myself anyway, so let's be real. This, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with these. And, ha! My Hero Academia Volume 1. Cool. So a stack of comic books for my classroom, which is super exciting. Okay, now let's move on to books for my personal library that I got. Um, I'm just gonna kind of gonna like jump around to different things that I have. So from a free little library, if you didn't see that video, would you believe that I found Kindred? What? This is such a good find. I've been wanting to read this for so long and I have um, like put this into the polls for the uh, sci-fi book club that I run, but it just hasn't won any polls. So I think if it doesn't win a poll pretty soon, I'm just gonna end up reading this myself on my own. But uh, classic sci-fi, I'm probably just gonna end up reading this on my own. So a classic that I need to get to sooner rather than later. Um, another book that uh, I actually have finished at this point. This is Artificial Intelligence, which is book two in the Murderbot Diaries. We are reading this for the sci-fi book club, but not as like the main pick of the month, more of something that we're reading on the side. So a read along because I think at this point, the ninth book, or something like that is gonna be coming out pretty soon. And we didn't wanna devote half a year just to reading this series. Plus some of us really love it and some of us are kinda like meh on it. Uh, I am more in the meh category, whereas like I gave book one um, 
four stars and this one I'm rating a little bit lower even though I haven't really done a full video talking about it yet and we haven't had our monthly live show for it yet um, but I'm intrigued enough to the point where I like Murderbot and I like the premise of this which is a AI that's kind of gone rogue and just reads as autistic um, and you know, has to take jobs just to kind of like move through society, but really doesn't want to interact with people. Very antisocial, very much a misanthrope. And um, yeah, I just, I don't know. This book, this one particular, didn't really do what the first book did for me, but that's okay. Um, I am going to continue reading it. So we're reading like one to two of these a month because they're thin. They're in novellas. Uh, so hopefully I'll be caught up by January. And if you want to read it with us, the link for the Discord is below. A series that I'm really vibing with right now is The Expanse. This is Cibola Burning, which is book four in The Expanse. I finished book three last month, Abaddon's Gate, and I had a great time. Each of the books in this series, I've steadily rated a four star. There's nothing wrong with the series. Um, there's no reason why the show should suck like i haven't watched the show um i have a couple friends who said that the book is better than the show and that there's a lot of things that they left out even though it's a very long book series like there's nine books that are like this chunky and a novella however they still took out some characters uh what i've been told which is upsetting but at the same time you know i'm not reading this because i want to watch the throne show i'm reading this because the series is genuinely fun and interesting um i'm thinking about doing a dedicated video to the first three expanse books just because we talked about the first one a long time ago as a sci-fi book club pick but we never really continued talking about the series and i've been, just been kind of reading it behind the scenes so uh there will be a video about that probably coming out sometime i don't know when i'm not giving you a date uh, but it, again, it's been a solid four star all the way through just because so much action, political tension, um, space drama, great space opera. So, I mean, I recommend this if you want something that's like fast and fun, uh, but I don't recommend it if you want something that's going to be challenging social constructs because it's really just about the action. So, okay, this book is by an author that I previously enjoyed and I'm very excited because it is the September pick for the Sci-Fi Club, which is why I bought it because I really want to annotate it. And if I end up liking it as much as I enjoyed the first book that I read by this author, chances are it's probably going to end up in a photo as my like icon and sun social media app. Um, but Certain Dark Things by Silvia Moreno Garcia, Vampires, Horror, Sci-Fi. All I know, I'm really going in blind. Um, I mean, I've read a little bit of the synopsis on the back, but I feel like it's, it, the, the back synopsis reads kind of bland to me. Like, all I got from it is uh, Mexico City and vampires and um, um, it's like police noir and, you know, I don't know, it's giving me cyberpunk, but... I'm just going on that I love uh, Sylvia Marona Garcia's writing style and I like the tension that she builds up and the way that like kind of dark things slowly unfold uh, with unlikable characters for me. That's how I felt about Mexican Gothic, but that's a whole other thing in itself. So if you want a dedicated review for this, I think this is going to be on my channel in September. So a dedicated Certain Dark Things review will be probably coming up in the last week of September. So stick around for that. A lot of horror in this haul, a lot of sci-fi in this haul. Um, so we're just gonna keep keep that going. Uh, this I'm really looking forward to. This is Horror Store. It is a horror story set in an Ikea-like uh, facility. And something to do with like the mundanity of everyday life and the monotony of functioning in a capitalist a job where you just you come in, you do what you gotta do, and you punch out and you basically become a zombie. Um, it looks like a grand time because it actually like reads like an Ikea catalog, which is super fun. My partner read this. He thought it was fun. Um, he didn't think it was the most thought-provoking book that he's read in a while, so I actually value his opinion on that. So I'm going into this just with light expectations that it's going to be a fun time, not that it's going to be my new favorite horror of all time. It's just like gimmicky shits and googles, 
that's fine. That's really all I want. So if I just want a day where I have good vibes with a horror book, it'll be this. Um, I haven't read anything else by Grady Hendrix, but a bunch of their books are on my Amazon wish list. So come my birthday at, at the end of the year, like around New Year's time, chances are you will probably be seeing more Grady Hendrix books in that like New Year's birthday haul. Um, Cause what is it like? My Best Friend's Exorcism, and I think Final Girl Support Group, those titles I'm really looking forward to reading because they seem very much up my alley as far as like what the premise is. This one is just, again, just for the gimmick. It just looks fun. This next one has been in a couple TBR videos at this point because I keep saying that I'm gonna get to it. I am filming this at the end of August and I did put this on my September TBR. So you'll probably see a vlog or something coming out, like a horror reading vlog for this book relatively soon but this is Little Heaven by Nick Cutter. Um, I've said before that Nick Cutter is one of my favorite horror authors. He wrote The Troop um, which is a body horror about parasites. Think The Lord of the Flies plus Science Experiment, Boy Scouts gone horribly wrong. I love that book. I really do adore it. I don't think I'm going to reread it anytime soon, but I definitely do see myself rereading it because it was just so dark and gritty. Um, and the other book, which was the first one that I read by Nick Cutter, was The Deep. So it's like The Abyss meets The Thing. Again, very fun. So if this isn't a five star, I will be very surprised because I've, I'm pretty sure I rated those other two horror by him five stars. So this is my highly anticipated of the year, hoping to get to it in the beginning of September. Um, but this one particularly is mercenaries who were hired to go to an island to handle a situation or look for a missing person. They get there and they find out that there is a murderous, I don't want to say cannibalistic, but something is really wrong with the people there that are a religious cult. And now they are trying to get out before Whatever happens that brought them there happens to them. Um, so that, it just, it just sounds like fun. I'm very excited for that. This next one might throw some of you through a loop because I don't even know why I grabbed this, honestly. Um, the Wicked Deep. I don't know. I feel like I've heard a couple other book tubers. Not that I follow because I trust their opinion to pick books for me, but just that I really like their style of reviewing, um, which is fine, right? Like you can watch different people for different reasons and enjoy their content for different reasons. And these are particular people whose I wouldn't rate high the same books that they've rated five stars. However, I saw this one floating around a lot and I thought, why not? Um, I know that I'm not a fantasy, why I'm not a YA fantasy girly. I know that. And yet, however, here I am trying again. <laughs> so I think in this case, if I don't end up uh, reading this by next year, I'm just going to unhaul it and call it a day and just say like, I tried. Um, unless someone in the comments of this video particularly says, Steph, give the Wicked Deep a try. I think you're going to like it. I don't have particularly high expectations for this but I'm gonna take a leap and just say, you know what, maybe it's gonna be a fun time. Uh, what did intrigue me in the first place about this was witchcraft. Like I, there was a time where I was really obsessed with the Crucible, like learning about the Salem witch trials. Um, when I first started reading a lot about American history and like feminism, I don't know. I don't know if that, that was just what like peaked me at the time and it stuck in my brain as like witchcraft, witch trials, crucible. This is about witchcraft. Maybe you'll enjoy it. Uh, but that's a very loose connection that I, I just, I'm probably like stuck on a thought there for some reason that shouldn't, I shouldn't be giving that much time of day because of my reading taste, but hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong about that. The next two books I'm very excited. One of them I read already and one of them is a sequel that I haven't read. Um, Lore and Lust Volumes 1 and 2. Oh my gosh, wait, does it go like this? 
No, no, it doesn't. But look at how stunning these covers are. Aren't they beautiful? Credit goes to my friend Natalie, who first recommended these BL vampire books to me uh, by this indie author. Carla Nicole is wonderful. I highly recommend that you support. Um, there are three books in this series, and then I think there might be a novella also. I don't know. Uh, but book one, beautiful one of the best vampire romance books that I've read in years. I devoured this very quickly and I knew that if I ever uh, did another book haul where I was just like, hey, who are some authors that I want to support? Carla Nicole is one of them. Um, so very unique. The whole blood drinking like scene tropey thing in vampires done exceptionally well in here. Beautiful. It is sexy it's gorgeous it's romantic so there's that and then book two is continuing this so we do have a plot happening in the background aside from the romance where something's happening that vampires are kind of like disappearing and like families are falling apart so i'm hoping we get more of that in here however my friend did tell me that you know i'm gonna drop her like tiktok or something uh because she is a tiktok like book reviewer person um so you guys should totally go follow her because she's amazing um this one more on the political intrigue or is it the lore? It's probably just the lore um, than the romance that's established in book one, but it's beautiful and I love our main characters and just like, come on, how could you not? Okay, this is also one that I happened to find in a free little library. Like, can, you, can you believe that? This is Disfigured on Fairy Tales, Disability and Making Space. Um, this one has been hyped to the high heavens by a lot of people whose opinions are similar to mine and so i'm very interested in learning about how fairy tales shape how we see the world so what happens when you identify more than the beast and the beauty if every disabled character is mocked and mistreated how does the beast ever imagine a happily ever after so examining fairy tales and understanding like what those do to our expectations of what it means to like value yourself as the main character of your own story um and people with disabilities and kind of like why representation matters, which always matters, um, but let's talk about why that matters. So very, very excited for that. Also found in a free little, like these next two, three, this and two more were also found in a free little library. Again, like this one I think has made its rounds around booktube as being really popular and really fun. Um, it's a thriller when no one is watching, a family in Brooklyn, I don't know, but Alyssa Cole is someone who I've been interested in reading for a long time. So this I'm, this is just gonna be for fun. Um, it is a thriller and I don't usually keep my thriller. So there is a high chance that once I read this, I will be returning it back to my little library because once I know what the ending is, I'm not gonna reread again. So let's talk about it. Um, so that will be fun. And then Japanese literature, which, this is an author who I have been interested in for a while. Their other famous book, Breast and Eggs, was making rounds for a while. Yeah, Breast and Eggs was a book that I saw making its round on booktube for a while, and that was very much liked by a lot of book reviewers who enjoy classic lit. Um, also, a friend of mine, a longtime friend of mine named Vicky, who I was talking to yesterday, I believe, told me that she thinks this is an author that I'm probably going to vibe more with than the other translated work which I read. I can't even say recently because I definitely have not kept up with my translated uh, lit fic, but Sayaka Murata, who wrote Convenience Store Woman, I mean, I enjoyed that book, but I wasn't exactly running to read more. And so she thinks that this is someone that I'm going to like. So, you know, good vibes that I'm getting from uh, people who I watch and from people who I'm friends with. So hopefully this ends up being something that I enjoy, but this is all the lovers in the night. Insightful and often humorous and wholly captivating, Lovers Minds the Complexity of Human Relationships by Recounting the Story of a Woman Who Has None. It is a book about the world of work, its vicissitudes and its joys, and about the ways in which the past insists on shaping our present. Um, so I think this is a contemporary, but I, what, I, what really draws me about con contemporaries are when it's about older women. So more specifically, 
higher ratings will probably go to books that are about older women but I just really want to read more books that are about older characters and or characters that are in my age bracket so this main character I believe is in her 30s and she's just got this mundane life um, so following her, her through that and understanding herself which is why I did like convenience store women because it was about a character who was a little bit older but it, it wasn't really so much about her being older although that played a part in why the story or what the challenges were that the character faced but more that that character was neurodivergent uh, and working in a convenience store so society was trying to place expectations on her that she just wasn't receiving um so that is like a, a category of lit fic that i am very much interested in um i don't know if this is lit fic but anxious people by frederick bachman um again a couple friends of mine on booktube have not particularly like recommended this to me but i know that they love it so I'm really interested in giving this a try. I also know that a lot of people really like Frigid Bachman and saying that his books are very thought provoking and emotional and probably gonna cry. So if I feel like crying, there's that. Um, this one is more of a textbook or an art book, workbook that I'm interested in. So if I get to become a professor, uh, which is a job that I'm thinking about doing in the near future. This is probably going to end up being a color theory textbook. Uh, this is well known in art circles for being the most in-depth workbook about color. Um, now, some people might disagree with that statement. However, in my experience, having gone through many art workbooks, this one I've seen as a more successful one and I've actually done a couple exercises from here before but I just never owned my own personal copy so there are more in here that I would like to get to but this is Interaction of Color it's the 50th edition by Joseph Albers and uh, color theory is very interesting so if anyone would ever like to see me do a video on color theory or the science of color or how color works how it functions that if it exists um, let me know but I would love that color theory is one of my favorite things to talk about and since half of my practice is painting it's important to be able to examine the applications of color um, i also teach graphic design and while that's a very different use of color the applications uh are they cross over i'll say anyway moving away from our talk to my last book in this video this is The Strange Library by Haruki Murakami and my partner actually bought this for me which I'm super excited. Um, it is a novella. I haven't read a Haruki Murakami book in a long time um, but it opens like this which tells you very much if you're familiar with Haruki Murakami this is very much his vibe. It's very strange <laughs> regardless of the title. Uh, he writes weird fiction and I love the illustrations that are in here. So it very much breaks up the chapters and I could probably even read this in one sitting. Uh, but a lonely boy, a mysterious girl, a tormented sheep man plot there escapes from the nightmarish library of internationally acclaimed best selling her from her crummies, wild imagination. What is it with him and sheep? He's had a lot of books about sheep, but they're just kind of there. They're just kind of a thing. Like sheep are supposed to symbolize this kind of weird nymph presence i don't really i don't know uh but again he's one of my favorites he has issues there are issues with his writing i will say that however it's a fun time it's very strange it's very discomforting and i love it okay that is it for this book haul um i'm not even gonna attempt to hold this giant stack of books that are here because i was struggling to do so for a thumbnail um but if you want to get a dedicated review for any of these books in particular, or if there's a couple of these that you'd like to see put together in a vlog, let me know. I think I am definitely going to be doing some horror vlogs with these or sci-fi vlogs, but that's it. I post a video whenever I feel like it. I'll see you later. Bye. I'm Leo.